All right, so it's Thursday night, about 10 o'clock in Gothenburg, Sweden, a few hours uh, southwest of Stockholm, and uh, kind of, I guess you could say in the business district, but it's a city of, uh, Gothenburg's about a half a million, and I guess the metropolitan area is about a million, so I mean it's a good sized city, the second largest city in Sweden. Things are pretty quiet tonight. It's quiet pretty, actually pretty early so far. I haven't been around a weekend, so, but just kind of going to do a panoramic view here and I'll get up in the morning. It's very bustling in the morning with people going to work and living in these apartments. Um, and like I said, I, I haven't really looked at this film yet, so I have no idea of the clarity. But I'm, what I'm facing now is a uh, stadium. Its primary use is a soccer stadium, but uh, they do concerts there. Um, Bruce Springsteen was just here this summer, and and some others I'll think of in a minute. But uh, I'm guessing that stadium holds probably 40 or 50,000 people. I could be wrong. It might be 100,000 or it might be 20, but it's big. You probably can't tell from this, but I'll just keep doing kind of a panoramic view. I'm up uh, out on a balcony at my hotel. Just uh, kind of looking at um, looking east. I had to think about that for a minute. So Gothenburg is on, in the west. Matter of fact, I read an article um, in one of the magazines in my room about go out west and um, so I guess Gothenburg's the west part of Sweden. But anyway, hopefully this turns out okay. And like I said, I'm just gonna keep kind of panning um, public transportation here is excellent. I mean, everybody uses it for, you know, half a million people right in the city and a million in the Metroplex. Um, <laughs> there's really no traffic issues. Um, there's subways and trains, um, which tomorrow I'll probably take some pictures of that. It's a massive train station right near where I'm at called Central Station. Go figure, huh? And, uh, you know, there'll be 10 trains, big trains, pulled up that go all over the country and Europe. And then there's subway, um, or above ground. I'm not sure about subway, subterranean, but there's above ground uh, trams that use the electricity above ground. We'll see probably one here pass in a minute, as well as buses. But the, 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 um, the trams go everywhere. I mean, there's just tracks everywhere. There's tons of them. And uh, I'm surprised to see them pass already. But, um, and then I'll just keep panning here. There's, um, I'm not sure what that is. I think that's an apartment building right there. I don't think that's a hotel. Um, this building I'm getting ready to pan to is pretty cool. Spent the last three days there. It's, um, the Jepson building. And like I said, I'm not sure if this will show up. I can see the sign coming into focus on my uh, my view here but the Jepson sign right there so this is a six-story building that's one of our offices worldwide offices it's um, they their primary expertise here is um, developing optimization software for crew systems so I guess you can think of it as manpower planning and how to optimize using for example uh, we recently sold Delta Airlines flight attendants. There's 24,000 24, flight attendants. So they uh, wrote software on how to optimize um, utilizing uh, the crews most efficiently. And uh, they do that for the cockpit crews as well. Their claim to fame, and they're pretty proud of it, that building's full of um, PhDs. I think um, 50 or 60% of everybody that works there has a PhD. Most of them are mathematicians. Um, heavy on the science and lo just lots of education. These guys are really smart guys and uh, 
And then they've got uh, some sales guys, my counterparts that live in Sweden, that sell this throughout um, Europe and uh, the Middle East as their primary territory. And primarily, these guys sell just the cruise systems. So what they did is they sent me over here to spend spend some time with these guys. Um, I sell everything but, but the cruise systems. So I sell uh, all the things that uh, Jepson sells, uh, navigation databases, flight planning systems, uh, tailor charting, document management, and all that. I, I've sold everything but cruise systems. So they, they wanted to get me over here and spend a week with them to kind of get me started. And, you know, if things go well, I'll probably be spending a lot more time in Sweden with these guys. But um, they're good guys, and uh, they're from all over the world, the sales guys. One guy actually lives in this hotel I'm in. He says he lives in it, so he, he's, he lives in Denmark, but he spends a lot of time here, and um, he calls this his second home, the hotel I'm staying in. But um, anyway, I'm just going to kind of keep panning and zooming, and then when I get back to the room, I'll look and see how this turned out. Hopefully it turned out good. But I don't know if you can see those lights off in the distance, but it's a really nice, a beautiful um, skyline. And um, it's peaceful at night. I, you know, I come out here at night and have a cup of coffee or just hang out and kind of let wind down and relax. And then in the mornings I like to come out and have breakfast and just kind of watch the city wake up. I'm going to pan around now to, to the actual hotel and hotel room. You probably can't, probably can't really make it out, but what the heck, hopefully it won't make you dizzy here. I'm just kind of panning around. So here's the patio, um, staircase, speed up. But as you can see, it's just, um, it actually kind of almost reminds me of Disneyland or something. It's just um, looking down this street. It's extremely clean for a city this large, extremely safe. Or it feels safe, and it is safe. I mean, nowhere is 100% safe, but Sweden is just um, really, relatively speaking, to what we're used to in the cities we live in, extremely safe. People are extremely um, friendly. Everybody speaks English. It's uh, really impressive. Um, as soon as I start talking, they just switch to English and very little accent because the structure of their language is very similar to English. So um, it's kind of weird. It's um, like I was saying to to Barb um, when they speak English. Really, the accent is less than. Um, most Hispanics that I live around in the United States, as far as, uh, and, and actually some Hispanics that were born and raised in the United States, it's almost hard to detect an accent, relatively speaking. They just, um, everybody speaks English and speaks it perfectly. I mean, um, sometimes somebody will apologize and it just blows my mind because it's just, uh, it's almost perfect. So there goes one of the trams. And they'll hook up two, three, four cars, depending on the time of day. But anyway, I'm going to shut this down. There's not really much to see. I'll just kind of spin around quick. I don't even see that, but, you know, just see people riding bicycles. Lots of bicycles. People either walk, ride a bike, or take public transportation, especially in the summer. I mean, they're really proud about that. Um, extremely low CO2 carbon output for a country and uh, a city of this size. Um, what's interesting is um, they're extremely far north um, as far as the latitude. So, um, you know, this time of year it gets dark about 8 o'clock at night, but in the dead of winter, uh, it's, it, I think they said it's about 18, 19 hours. It's, it's pretty dark and five, six hours of sunlight. Um, and then Midsummer's Eve, which is June, the longest, um, longest day of the year, then, uh, it's the opposite of that. It's, uh, it's light for 18, 19 hours of the day. And the Swedes, um, they really, uh, 
take advantage of that. They're extremely health conscious, and in the summer they want to be out on the water and um, doing things outdoors. They love to eat outdoors and just hang out in the summer, do whatever they can, always being outdoors. I think, well, I know, because um, in the winter uh, it's, it's cold and dark and rainy, so they, they really appreciate, <laughs> I guess they appreciate the sunlight. And just uh, in summer, so they all uh, they're, they're all proud about you know whether they're biking or runners or sailing is huge here. That you know we talked about a good friend of mine work here that works here, um, Yarn. He's a I would say an expert sailor. Sails um, 55 yacht, um, 55 foot yachts. Um, brags about talking about um, how many days on, on the ocean he spends out in the North Atlantic sailing in, in the summer, and he sails in the winter as well. He's an uh, expert, expert sa sailor. But uh, anyway, I'm going to shut it down, and um, like I said, I'll come back um, in the morning so we get a different perspective on Gothenburg uh, on a Friday morning. And then uh, probably take some pictures Friday night. I got a feeling Friday night the street's going to be a little bit busier. But maybe not because, I mean, it is a working street. So it's not like this is a, a tourist section. But uh, anyway.